Okay. We shall continue with the uh, second lecture, which is basically related to the first lecture anyway. Issue in the construction industry. I have given you the scenario in terms of the, um, what we call construction economy. Okay, the topic that we mentioned is called construction economy, things related to the, uh, the growth economy, etc. Type of construction project can be divided into uh, housing, commercial, education, hotel, hospital, and factories. Sometimes when people uh, release the contract, they call it building works. And then another one, they call it civil engineering project. Okay. Originally, we as civil engineers are being associated with uh, infrastructure work. But now, uh, our nature of work has been more diverse. There are a lot of fields that got into this, uh, uh, what we call profession anyway, including the drainage or what we call public uh, health. Uh, public health engineering, okay? Public health engineering, safety, etc., and etc. Project characteristic. How do we define project? When people call certain thing by the name of a project, well, there must be some character char characteristic that we can associate with uh, what when we call it a project. Otherwise, it won't be called a project. Okay, project by right should consist of multiple activities. You cannot basically call a project. Okay, you simply cannot call a project when the activity that you need to do in that particular so-called uh, work is only one activity. You can imagine when a lecturer gives you project compared to the name like assignment or homework. So when you are given a project, then you must have some, something into your mind it must have some kind of difficult difficulty level. It must basically consist of many, many things that you need to do. You must basically interact with people. So that's why many people involved. You simply cannot do one acti uh, many, many activity alone. So it involves multiple people, okay? Then, unique, unique meaning to say a project cannot be repeat after itself. What does that mean? You cannot basically duplicate. Let's say you want to build a KLCC. Okay. We already have KLCC being completed way back in 1997 in Kuala Lumpur. Then we want to build another Kuala KLCC in Johor Bahru. Okay. Even though we can copy in terms of design, in terms of height, in terms of the, um, the looks and whatnot, but there are many things that we simply cannot copy. We cannot even get the same material anymore nowadays. That, that could be one, one difference. We cannot even get the same people who basically built KLCC way back in 1997 to, 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 to reconstruct. Uh, the same project. They might be getting old already. Maybe some of them already die. We cannot simply use the same uh, equipment. And we cannot be even built on the same uh, ground condition. And those are the factors that will affect the performance of the project. So you cannot expect the performance of the project will be the same. When you have different, different kind of problem way back in uh, Kuala Lumpur, you cannot basically expect that the project is going to be running smoothly. No, that is what is meant by unique. So don't try to be very complacent. When you do the same project again and again, please expect one project as a unique uh, one-time event, okay? 
even though you repeat a similar project, you you have to be very careful of what to expect. Now, this is what is the concept of the project. Finite, finite mean beginning and ending. The project should have one starting point and then one ending point. It 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 cannot be considered a project when you do have a routine work. So it is like maintenance. Maintenance is a routine work. It is never ending process. So that cannot be considered as a project. But within the maintenance, you could have a special project such as installation of a solar system, installation of a retrofit and whatnot. That, that is different. That if we did, even though it is within the maintenance, but it can be considered as a project because it starts with a, a certain date and then the project must end with certain deadline. That is what project is all about. And then limited resources, limited resources and budget. All the project normally being attached to some kind of budget. And everybody, especially the client, will not be very happy when you encroach or when you go beyond the budget. So everything you do have budget because money is basically limited. Even though even the, the richest person on earth also, they can count their money. So we need to say, their health is uh, their wealth is basically limited okay and when the rich people want to invest on project they are more concerned about money compared to normal person so the budget must be complied to many people involved i already mentioned nobody do the project alone okay sequence of activity when we talk about activity there could be numerous activity and even that activity have to follow step by step. You just simply cannot do a project or activity haphazardly. You just simply want to do, you thought that you want to do one activity first and then second, the, the, the last activity second. No, no, you simply cannot do that, especially in construction. Construction, we normally build from the bottom up. Okay, from the bottom up, and then only you you complete the roof. Nobody do the, the other way around. Okay, so that is an example of sequence. And that sequence have something to do when you do planning and scheduling. Planning and scheduling basically need is the um, is the uh, basically the discipline that uh, force you to do the to do the work according to what comes first, and then second, third, etc and goal oriented all the project do have what we call kpi what to be achieved in terms of what in terms of the quantity in terms of the quality and etc etc kpi to be achieved okay people do not want to know what kind of problem that you face during uh, during the project execution people only interested to know when the project is going to be completed. You see, that is the nature. That is the KPI that people normally attach. The problem, we do not want to, to listen or to hear, but we wanted to know when the project shall be completed. Okay, so that is what we call result. So if you are working on a certain project, so please expect that um, you have to uh, settle the problem by yourself. The boss is not going to be to, to listen to that thing. The boss is not interested to know about the uh, problem that you face. The boss only want to know when you shall deliver the uh, what we call uh, the completion date and then in terms of the KPI achievement. All right, construction project cycle. Construction project cycle, I can draw something like this. Let me draw the bit there. Okay, now this is the, what we call cycle. We start with what? Inception, I, then feasibility, then planning, then design, then procurement, then what? Construction, then testing, then operation, then perhaps refurbishment, then lastly, demolition. This is what we call cycle. Cycle meaning to say, this is the life of a project. Okay, the life of a project. 
So the project basically starts with nothing. There is, there is no building yet, like UTM. We only start building uh, UTM campus way back in 19, 1984. Before, it's just a piece of land or basically estate. Okay, estate. Then we start with the inception. Okay, the idea of uh, moving uh, UTM Kuala Lumpur campus to somewhere else because the, the, the space in UTM KL was quite tight, small. Then um, we wanted to have a big, big, bigger uh, land area. So that was the idea. And then it started with the inception. Conceptual. We do have one slide for this one. I'm not going to go very detailed. And then it goes into feasibility study, procurement, design, and then um, construction. You see, whenever you see one project is going up, basically you are going to see this space only. You do not see the whole activity going on before the construction begin. Okay, there are a lot of things that must be done prior to the construction. So, and then you notice that uh, the life cycle of the project after a long, long time, let's say 100 years, maybe the, the building will deteriorate, okay? Uh, where you need to be uh, to repair the building. That's what we call refurbishment. Refurbishment. And you repair the building, then the building can run for a few more years. But then sometimes you simply cannot repair. The building is too old. It is better for you to demolish and reconstruct uh, than repairing. Uh, this is what we call, you start all over again. Okay. Now, if we are looking at the timeline of a project, timeline, you notice that here, uh, number one is uh, initiate, init, initiation and feasibility study, and then go into planning, go into procurement, and then uh, construction, operation. And you notice that all these uh, very important phases in construction, construction life cycle, do have a lot of bodies, a lot of people, a lot of association, a lot of uh, issue actually uh, along the way. And this by itself create problem, bureaucratic delays, all kind of issue, conflict among uh, different bodies, parties, etc., etc. Et and you notice that uh, in a project development, there are a lot of authority involved. Maybe in Malaysia, it is up to 30 authorities. And all the authorities do have the way that uh, they are working, the way they work that sometimes will delay things. That is the issue. Okay, example, Bakun Dam in Sarawak. Eh? This is just an example how, of how a project um, takes long, long time to complete. Bakun project, Initial survey way back in 1960s. Detailed examination take around 10 years in order to examine whether it is a potential site or not. And you know what? In Malaysia, there are, there are some survey like this to see whether it is a potential or not to build a new dam. But we never know because it was being done by certain certain office or organization. And then 1986 it was de decided that the project is going to be built. And then again, this is a rece recession, the project was being postponed. And then the project was being awarded and construction begin. And then the project was being postponed again due to economic crisis. And then re-award to different contractor, different consortium, and then only it was being completed and then it was run. Okay, was, was being operated. So you just imagine, if we compare to this uh, cycle, it looks like the development, the initial development of the Bakun Dam here uh, took longer time than the construction itself. 
Okay, why? Because there are so many issues. And you notice that there are projects who basically do not get through even uh, into the second uh, phase. It might start into the first one. When they figure out that it is not feasible, it is not uh, feasible, okay, in terms of the concept, then it stuck there. It will not go into the planning stage anymore. Sometimes the planning stage pass, but then it gets stuck at design. Maybe at design stage, the project was being scrapped. That is how the life of a project. And then basic features of construction project. When we talk about construction project, it is being uh, it basically sit in the construction industry. So there are some overlapping issues when we talk about construction industry and construction project, there could be some similar things. But when we talk about project itself, we cannot run away from the issue of what we call uh, conflict, okay? Conflict with the um, with regard to uh, contractual matters, okay? All right, now, this uh, diagram. This diagram indicate wall in between who? In between designer, consultant. First thing first, or the owner will basically normally will call upon uh, designer to design uh, what basically the owner envision, what kind of project that the owner thought that uh, he or she wanted, okay? And then the owner normally will call the architect first. And then the architect will collaborate with the uh, designer, uh, civil engineer, structure engineer, electrical, mechanical, etc., etc. They will come up with design, complete all the document, and then uh, ready for tender in order to choose the best contractor. Let's say the contractor has been appointed. So this is what we call contractor or constructor. Okay, the contractor basically will uh, will only receive drawing, specification, etc. Everything is on writing, and how basically contractor is going to convert everything on writing, just on paper, into reality. The fact that construction is much difficult compared to visual visualization. You can visualize using whatever software, but Construction basically require a lot of uh, what we call hands-on management. You need to manage the uh, weather. You need to manage the material, the people, the machine, the money, etc., etc. And you need to deal with all kind of people attitude. So that's why sometimes people who are basically being called designer or consultant who basically never have uh, construction related experience, they, they really cannot imagine. That's why sometimes when they design things, things are not practical. Whereas contra contractor are looking at the practical things. But sometimes contractor might not have the knowledge as good as the designer because they already forgot all the knowledge. Once you graduate, when you go into consultant, you will, you will never have any experience with regard to construction. Similarly, when you go into the construction site, all the things that you basically learn in your design will be gone, as simple as that. So people who design things is according to their mind might not be, be getting what they envision for because contractor, when they want to construct something, they must look at the practical side. So this is the issue. The, it is like the wall dividing these uh, two profession. The designer wanted uh, to have certain thing, but then contractor cannot give because simply it is difficult to construct. So that's why there is a word to uh, lessen or to reduce this issue. We call it constructability. Constructability or buildability. Buildability. This wording. And uh, the authority basically come up with the index, buildability index or constructability index. What does that index mean? Well, simply say, let's say after the uh, designer come up with the design and then by using that index, which can be measured in whatever, there, there's some kind of values attached. We want to know what could be the constructability index in terms of scoring. 
let's say if the index score 80%, which is similar to grade A, so meaning to say the project is going to, to be easily constructed without too much problem, anticipated. Uh, that is the concept. So this constructability and build, buildability is trying to reduce the gap between designer people in the office and people who basically at the construction site. Okay, because uh, contractor and consultant are basically two different field or two di different discipline. That would be one of the, what we call the way trying to reduce the issues. Another way is, is basically to have uh, what we call contract. Maybe you have learned in construction technology, estimating and contract class, the word uh, build, operate, operate and transfer or design and build. Design and build is uh, different from traditional contract where people invented this uh, concept in order to reduce the issue of uh, constructability. Uh, that is an another, another way and people do come up with all different different ways trying to solve all kind of problem, but not, I would say they are not going to be very successful because when they introduce certain certain method, certain certain contract, certain certain way, they could be having some kind of pro and uh, con situation. All right. So traditionally, in a traditional contract, the owner uh, normally will call after will call open the designer where I would call architect and engineer. But there is a middleman, I call it project management consultant, PMC, where we can, um, we can basically appoint in order to be like a middleman between the owner and the rest of the uh, people, such as architect and engineer, and then the contractor, okay? The middleman, because the, the owner do not want to get involved so much. Otherwise, everything you need to attend a meeting to make decision where basically you might not have knowledge. Okay, so the appointment of PMC is basically to reduce a certain issue. Okay, with regard to managing many many parties at the construction. Instead of you managing everybody, now you can appoint. But of course, it will be additional costs that you need to pay. Okay, now we go into the last part of our lecture, challenges in the construction industry. The most press, pressing issues with regard to heavy reliance on large number of unskilled people, 80% of the construction workers are coming from uh, foreign workers and majority of the foreign workers in Malaysia might be 70, 60 to 70% can be considered as unskilled workers. What does these unskilled workers uh, basically do or impact? It will impact in many, 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 many different ways, such as quality, productivity, safety, and then some issue with regard to social, social issue. Multi-layer subcontracting system, meaning to say you subcontract. Sometime in Malaysia, maybe you have heard about Alibaba, Alibaba, uh, terminology. Why? Certain people might be getting a job because they know a certain individual for politician, but he has basically no knowledge with, with such job. He just uh, he's just getting a job due to some kind of uh, connection and that would be issue. So he need to basically get people who really know how to, the to do the job. So he will subcontract the work. And maybe the one that get the contract might not might not be able to get the job done hundred uh, percent. So he will subcontract some of the work again, and then subcontract again, 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 and again, because of that thing happening. It will drive the uh, basically the issue of the cost up very much high because people who basically uh, do at the end or uh, at the bottom of subcontracting, for instance, they still wanted to make money. Otherwise they cannot do the job. You see, that is a bad thing about the issue of uh, sub multi-layered subcontracting system. Segregation of activities, okay. 
if we handle certain project, then you have to go through many, many, many authorities. That could be um, a very, uh, what, what we call, uh, will take a long, long time in order to get things approved, in order to get things moving. So in such a way, it is not a good, it's a good thing because you, we, you need to complete the construction very fast, but then you get stuck with all kind of bureaucratic delays. That is not good. All right. So you notice that when you want to read this uh, topic, you must basically read, you must go to CIDB website, Construction Development Industry in Malaysia, okay, CIDB. You can refer to uh, CITP document. This is five years plan for construction industry. And then you can refer to CIMP previously. Currently, we are uh, we, uh, 2020 and uh, the first, the previous five years is CITP. Uh, and then the, the, the older document is basically CIMP. We are supposed to have a new uh, master plan for construction industry beginning this year, but we have not seen such a document yet. In that document, it will tell everything about construction industry. Where are we now? Where are we going for the future in the, in the next five years? What are the issues that we are going to tackle or we are facing? What could be our strategic plan? So go and find the, uh, the, the uh, what we call publication and read if you want, if you are interested to know what is happening in the construction industry. So based on that uh, document, so we just put uh, some important point into this slide. So how to read this thing, okay? How to read this thing, problem, there could be issues and then strategy, okay? Problem, issue and solution. Low quality, where does this low quality come from? It is coming from multiple, multiple sources. We cannot blame contractor itself. We cannot blame the workers itself. It basically start from Poor design, who basically design? It must be from architect and basically engineer. Contractor do not design things, even though we can blame contractor for the for most of the uh, issue. But again, there are a lot of um, uh, what we call causes. What could be the uh, solution? Well, there are a lot of solution, but I want you to focus on this thing. What does this? item basically tell, tell us, okay? New construction technique. I, we can refer to IBS, industrialized building system. That's why government depends so much on this IBS because IBS is, is thought to be, to, be, uh, to, be, uh, to be a pill. Like you just have, uh, you just basically have one pill for everything. In reality, it's not. Uh, it basically, it doesn't work that way. That is the issue. Second, low productivity. Why low productivity? Unskilled workers. And then uh, accident prone environment. If you have a lot of accident, then you need to stop, stop work. Low technology, for sure, when you are using all old material, uh, all old, sorry, all old, uh, what we call uh, machine, for sure, you are not going to get many, many uh, uh, quantity of uh, work produced, high construction wastage, etc., etc. And again, how to solve the problem? You see, again, government is uh, banking on IBS, but the issue is that IBS is not uh, moving as fast as what the government want. Private sector do not want. Uh, do not want to move from the traditional way of doing things into IBS completely. Some part, yes, but not 100%. Fragmentation, because there are so too many approving authorities. So this thing, perhaps, uh, IT is one platform. IT is one of the best way. Okay, IT is one of the best way in order uh, to, to basically tackle this issue. Because why? When you do the computer system, people can trace 
where basically the submission have gone through. Then you can chase who basically the culprit, uh, basically who delay the, 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 the process. Poor image, why poor image? Construction has been known as 3D, 3D industry. What does 3D mean? Dangerous, degrading, and then um, uh, another D, dirty industry, okay? Why? The nature of the job is dangerous. Dirty industry where basically uh, in terms of uh, corruption is one thing, but dirty when you go to the construction site, uh, it is not like working at the office, that will be another thing. And then it is not a safe environment. Okay, there are a lot of risks, uh, dust, noise, etc., where it will degrade the quality of uh, your life anyway when you work for so long. Lack of data and information. For instance, safety. Okay, when we talk about safety or accident, the government cannot come up with a proper solution or basically action plan when um, the data are not being um, what we call recorded because some, some people are hiding the information uh, away because they are afraid of getting all kind of uh, punishment from the authority. At the end of the day, we are going to have a setback because we thought that everything is okay, but in reality, it is not okay. okay? So data is very important so that we can come up with a certain policy which is much better policy. Who bear the cost when project gets start? Okay, well, it depends. That's what we call delay, okay? Delay, uh, there, are, there are certain definition. They, they could be associated with uh, excusable delay, non-excusable delay. Excusable delay meaning to say, okay, when delay happen, um, the uh, what we call uh, the the authority, the authority meaning to say it could be the client or the uh, representative will not uh, penalize you, but when there is non-excusable delay, excusable delay meaning to say delay are being caused by the contractor or the contractor. Um, the contractor parties, it could be the subcontractor and everything associated with the subcontractors. And then the contractor get the blame and the contractor is the one that had to bear the cost. Okay, let's say for instance, uh, accident happened. When accident happened, they will, the, the, the work has to be stopped. Okay, the work had to be stopped for a few days. Then the equipment have to be replaced people basically die, you need to pay compensation. So whose money is that? It is the contractor's money. Okay, the client already pay you uh, in terms of amount of contract. So if you work properly, if you do work properly, then you will get your profit as what you targeted. But then if you do something wrong, for sure, the cost will increase. And when the cost increase, the, your profit will be reduced, as simple as that, okay? So uh, when delay happen, but for instance, in the COVID situation, some of the delay are not being caused by the contractor because of the instruction of the government and the issue with regard to the supply of material, the issue with regard to the, the uh, workers. So, uh, maybe the client will not penalize. The client will normally give the contractor extra time. But uh, easier said than, uh, than done. If I give you extra time, but then if you, if you want to calculate everything, at the end of the day, contractor will, will have some uh, increase in cost, meaning to say maybe at a reduced profit. Still, contractor can make profit, maybe... Um, profit has been reduced a little bit. Okay, what to do? This is the situation where everybody have to sacrifice anyway. Economically volatile. What does economically volatile? Meaning to say it depends on the economic situation. So construction basically is a, sup a supply and demand kind of business. When they are supply, then basically 
uh, then there are demand, then basically uh, there are supplies. Okay. Okay. In terms of feasibility study, feasibility study are being bared by the developer. So that's why being developer, not only the construction cost that you have to bear, you have to pay a lot of consultant, a lot of professional. You need to do survey, geo geotechnical survey. Uh, then uh, you need to do land survey. You need to pay the authority in terms of land uh, conversion. You need to do uh, to pay the consultant in terms of feasibility study, etc., etc. And if, for instance, based on feasibility study, the uh, report uh, do not favor the development. So basically, the feasibility study suggests there is no way that we can go go forward with the development. And then, well, that is a part of investment. Investment doesn't mean that you are going to be profitable. But if it is profitable, then you can make a lot of money. Okay. So that's why uh, certain organizations do set aside uh, some amount of money in order to, um, uh, to be thrown away as a result of uh, what we call um, they need to invest on certain things. But then they never know. Okay, they never know whether they are getting the profit or not. That is part and parcel of business anyway. If you're afraid of uh, uh, what we call losing, then you cannot get involved with business because business is about risk taking. And bureaucratic delays. Okay, bureaucratic delays uh, basically with regard to uh, what we call there are a lot of approving authorities and some of the authority of um, authority are using all way or system, so that is the issue. Maybe in the internet area, that's why uh, people uh, government is pushing for IR 4.0. So IR 4.0, we can see maybe the internet is going to be used a lot. So all the old old system has been maybe converted into uh, IT system and whatnot. Then perhaps we can boost some of the issue in terms of uh, giving authorities uh, uh, the approval, uh, the approval timing could be shortened. All right, and then lack of ethic. Ethic is one big thing. Okay, now in Malaysia, for instance, corruption. Corruption is our enemy number one. Now it is not uh, drug anymore. Last time people are talking about drug is our enemy number one, but they didn't realize that corruption is a much bigger enemy because it can, uh, it can basically destroy everything, even a nation. Okay, so when you handle a project, uh, this is the issue. People, sometimes people, maybe when you graduate from university, you seem to be a very good person, but you never know. Five years from now, we never know what you are going to be. Okay, maybe you are you you are ahli surau ahli masjid dekat university, but then after five years you will be converted into monster. We never know because that's how uh, things happen because that is part and parcel of the thing. But you must have some kind of self uh, self conscious self discipline in order to avoid those things. Shortage of skill manpowers. Uh, those this thing is also. Sometimes it is very difficult to, 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 to settle because the way our construction industry uh, basically um, run is based on foreign workers and that foreign workers also, how do they get into Malaysia? Because there are people who do the business in terms of bringing them into, that is the issue. That is the big issue. So it is not going to be solved in one or two days, okay? So as a result, we are not getting the right people into our industry because they simply bring people out of uh, anywhere. Then suddenly you, construction industry or any other industry have to receive them regardless of what could be their background. And that is the issue, okay? Unless the government enforce a very strict system and uh, then only we can resolve but but uh, putting a strict system there could be some kind of implication to the industry industry might might not be 
having sufficient workers. When the sufficient workers are not around, then basically a lot of industry will stop doing business. That is another issue. Raising productivity, how to do that? These are the things being proposed by uh, the documentation, reduce labor, manpower, and then cutting edge technology, and then environmental issue. Nowadays, you have heard about sustainability is part and parcel of the construction itself because we just do not want to construct building and then at the same time destroy all the natural resources because what will be left for the future generation that will be the big issue and promote social responsibility this is what we call csr and you know what uh, all the com the company normally listed in uh, bursa saham malaysia they must set aside around a few percentage, maybe around five or ten percent of their profit into CSR. So, if you want to do some kind of project, go after public listed company. For sure, they will give you money because they need to spend money because it is part of their CSR. Ataupun kita panggil sedekah lah eh. Tapi sedekah ni macam perkataan yang kelas yang bawah lah. When they, 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 they use CSR, oh, nampak macam ni. Tapi sama je. Okay, CSR. All right. So, those are the things uh, that I want to mention with regard to the overview of the construction industry. The first slide, we talk about the construction economy. And then perhaps by now, you understand that construction industry is, uh, even though small in terms of the percentage of GDP, but it does have a big, big impact to a lot more other industry and it is a part and parcel. So what's left after uh, I give you, do you think, the, what do you think about the future of the civil engineer? What do you think uh, about this profession? Okay, after we, we, we say that we have built all kind of facility, LRT, MRT, whatnot, is there anything left to be built in a country like Malaysia? Uh, that will be a, a $1 million uh, question. Okay, with that, uh, so that is the end of our class. Okay, let me get into this, uh, uh, your, what we call, where is that thing? Okay, your attendant, please sign the attendant, let me. Click here. Oh my God. Okay, wait a second. Okay, okay, where is that? Thing? Consumption. Oh no, no, no. Okay, please sign the uh, attendance. Okay, please sign the attendance and then please answer the uh, quiz number one. You can, you can submit within, uh, well, I'll give you maybe around one hour. Okay, let me share, wait a second. Okay, let me share the thing.
Okay, I already share the uh, the quiz number one in the WhatsApp group. So you can uh, answer within one hour from now. So if you already signed, then that's it for me. And uh, next week will be a uh, holiday in Johor. Uh, so Tan Johor birthday, there is no class. So I shall see you next uh, two weeks.